Good evening, fellow nerdites, and welcome to another, another, another lovely episode of Carbonite Bounty BS. Uh, welcome evening for you guys tuning in to us, getting close to the holidays. We really appreciate it. Um, you know, we got some exciting content for you guys. A lot, a lot of talking points. We're just as excited to get into this as, uh, as much as you guys are. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to DP Brown, and he's going to let you know how to find us. Make sure that you guys are going to nerdcyclopedia.com where you will see all our links to your favorite um, you know, platforms. Um, you can follow us at Nerdcyclopedia on Instagram, Facebook, and also on Twitter, obviously. Um, make sure that you are downloading our podcast and listening to them on your favorite podcast platforms. Um, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening, you are um Wherever you're, you're listening to your favorite podcast, we are there. And also make sure that you're sending us feedback to nurse at nursecyclopedia.com. Appreciate that, DP. Um, well, welcome again to the panelists. Once again, guys, uh, another great episode. So, uh, look, I know there's a lot going on. We're not going to play around. It's just Carbonite Bounty BS, so we're going to dive right into it. Uh, we'll start out with Kendo. Uh, what were your first impressions about the episode? Uh, excellent. Um Great way to end it. Actually, I, it's funny. I thought it was going to end with the dark troopers punching through the door, through the blast door. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that each each one was going to be a slower fade to black. And and we weren't really going to know. I really thought that that's where it was going to end. But a great Han Solo moment there where all of a sudden here comes the savior out of nowhere, Luke Skywalker. So mm-hmm. it was a, I mean... It had everything from A New Hope, all the great parts from uh, Empire, tidbits of action from Return of the Jedi. Had all the really best stuff from all the all the stuff that I love. It was like it was it was great. Really ended the season really well. It's probably the best season finale I've ever seen in my life. Like it just really tied it all together. It was very good. Right, and uh, we'll go to Hitch as far as his thoughts. I mean, I have never maybe had an experience like this in my own home where I was standing up screaming, <laughs> yes, at the top of my lungs, you know, when, when we see the reveal of, of this uh, of this long anticipated character that I've been, I've been, you know, calling out for weeks and weeks and weeks on this show. And they actually did it. I didn't think they'd actually do it where they'd show uh, the, the Jedi Master himself. Luke Skywalker, who shows up in an X-Wing at exactly 30 minutes on your counter, and it is 4 minutes and 36 seconds of absolute perfection. Perfection in, in, in this anticipation that's building as you see more and more clues that it's Luke Skywalker. He's got an X-Wing. I actually yelled, I know who has an X-Wing. I yelled that at the TV screen in my own living room like I was 5 years old at the theater. You know, I saw, I saw The Force Awakens, you know, um in the theater at like 11 o'clock on a Sunday just because of my life schedule. And there were a bunch of families and a bunch of kids and the kids kept yelling stuff like that at the theater. You know what I mean? They're like, Oh, that's Kylo Ren and that's Chewbacca and that's Han Solo. And I yelled that at the, t- at the theater, at the screen in my living room. And that is so <laughs> wild that this, that this media could do something absolutely wholly unique and only, you know, only for like, it, it could only be Disney. It could only be star Wars. It could only be Mark Hamill. It could only be Luke Skywalker that did that. And for it to be so transcendent in such a high pressure situation where everybody had their eyes on this and for it to have come in. And, you know, I make fun of, uh, you know, Kendo and I have this friendly banner because he loved uh, episode nine and I wasn't super hot on episode nine. But man, oh man, I, this was a 10 for me all the way and, and, and down the street. And I just, it, it just checked every single one of my boxes almost like i wrote it <laughs> that's how much <laughs> that's how much i liked it man it was really awesome what about you dp hey episode was awesome you know up and down my favorite episode of the series so far <laughs> um yeah when when that end scene came okay so coming at it, coming at it from a perspective of you know, a casual Star Wars fan and, you know, getting more and more into the lore as I watch these episodes, really, you know, I'm thinking, okay, um, Ahsoka's coming. I'm like, yes, we're getting Ahsoka back, you know, but then I'm like, okay, the way she's walking, um, it's, it's a little different and she, she just kept approaching 
and the X-Wing, you know, before that, the X-Wing came and everything. Um, so I'm like, okay, she wasn't really riding like an X-Wing and stuff. So maybe that maybe that is Ahsoka, maybe it's not Ahsoka. And then gradually as the troopers, the you know, started turning around, I'm sitting up here like, okay, this is not Ahsoka right here. So it harkened back to um, Rogue One, the um, end scene, you know, the Darth Vader end scene, and to sort of parallel that a bit, I'm like, okay, this is being a little bit um, just just really, really eerily similar to that end scene and um, sort of just complement that start, that end scene in Rogue, you know, Rogue One, that scene with Darth Vader. And lo and behold, it's Luke Skywalker. I'm just like, wow, they went there. I'm like, it's it's and, and and you see you hear like online complaints about the CGI to his face, the de aging and everything. I thought it was perfect. I thought it I looked thought good. It was I mean, and, and, um, I thought you it can was tell, excellent. But I mean, I yeah, thought it was great. It, it, I mean, obviously you could tell because there's no way you know you could get a Luke Skywalker and you know right. um, or Mark Hamill and have them come back and you know be you know looking like that and everything. That's impossible. But for them to de age him, you know, they had the technology to do it. You know. Peyton Reed directed this episode. He did Ant Man, so he has the you know capabilities of de aging with um you know he did Hank Pym and um um yeah Hank Pym and Ant Man and de aged him pretty well in that movie. So I thought it was really great the way the way it just ended off and the way the emotional scene with um Grogu and um um Din Djarin just you know taking his helmet off just letting him touch him I mean it was just awesome you know through and through my favorite episode of the series so far yeah I mean I, I agree with you guys everything you said I, I thought it was put together so well I mean kind of like Hitch when I when I saw the X-Wing when they said like oh we have some, something that's coming in and I seen the X-Wing like you know like as a kid that grin I got when it came on, I can't even, like, you know, it's funny you play things in your mind again. I can just keep playing that intro scene in my head as you see the X-Wing coming across the front of the ship. Like, it's only one. And when I say that, my it's just the smile you get from that is, it's priceless. You know, somebody in our age that kind of, I mean, I wasn't originally, obviously, around in 85. I was born in 85, so I didn't get to see from the back. But as I grew older and got into the lure of it, to, to see that and then to Man. catch those, you know, as Kendo would, would imagine, you know, those feelings that when I first watched it and, and to attach to legacy characters like that, I really thought it was a uh, it was a nice touch. Um, the, the the fighting is what I what I really got into. I mean, the lightsaber combat, you're actually seeing the Luke Skywalker that with current, you know, I guess technology and and more maybe uh, athletic actors. Effects. I mean, just yes, right. the, the effects fighting style it, it really took it back to your episode two and three um in certain strokes of if you paid attention to it like i was calling talking to you guys off air you know you saw the behind the back lightsaber uh, stroke that anakin did in the uh in the third one but then you saw lightsaber combat forms from both uh episode two and three so the fact that you see how luke has learned from other jedi masters as he gotten older maybe through the force because obviously most of them they're all gone now but to yeah. see the Grand Master, you know, a Jedi Grand Master at full power, because once again, all the Jedi Grand Masters, when you talk about Yoda and even previously, are pretty old. This is a young Jedi Grand Master that we're seeing, and that final, you know, force, you know, uh, force squeeze, the how you, you know, <laughs> that, oh, that was it for me. That was force sma- That was it. it was, I, I didn't. I, I couldn't. I couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, the yeah. skill, the skilled use of the saber and the force. Right. Because, yeah. I mean, just, you don't see yeah. that. We've never seen that ever like that, right. and together in conjunction in any movie. So it was, yeah, it was great. It was really great. It was so reminiscent yeah. of of like because Luke's Luke's probably twenty seven or twenty eight. You know, he's right coming in right into the prime of his Hall of Fame career. Right, he's Mike Trout. You know, he what I mean. He's like you know, Luke Gehrig in twenty seven. Right. So he's coming right into his prime, and he has reminded me a lot of how Anakin moved in the prequels, like you're saying. And, you know, I couldn't help but think about that, that tunnel scene, like DP was saying, in, uh, in Rogue One, and how, how Vader just cut all those people down methodically. And that's exactly Slice, Slice what Luke dice. did. Yeah. It's exactly what Luke did to these dark troopers. But look, it's robots. Who cares, right? <laughs> thank god thank god they took the last weakness out of those out of those troopers or else that would have been a, mu- a much bigger pickle for a jedi master right you can't just be 86 in people for no reason 
I guess that's Terminator vibes from those Dark Troopers, you know, throughout their their appearances and everything. I mean, and it was just nice to see Luke just, like, slicing and dicing. That was just awesome. And then, you know, like we were talking about, like, the, the using the Force and, you know, crushing them. Same way that Darth Vader crushed them in, in um, you know, Rogue One at the end scene. I mean, it was, it was, just, it was just awesome to see. <laughs> Yeah, the Dark Troopers were great. If if you guys remember in the uh, the, the video game, the Dark For- Dark Forces, they were real real muscular. They were real uh, almost gorilla like. They were real like big, broad shouldered. I love the streamlined, almost uh, uh, almost battle droid kind of uh, yeah. feel to them. And I mean, super super sinister with the red. They're you know, red scary. Eye. Yeah, super scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really wanted them to do something like. Here's the thing. This was my only gripe about the episode. This is my only just hang with it. And it's been mine the whole time. Stormtroopers can't shoot and they go down too easy. <laughs> the dark troopers, when Din Djarin got rid of them in one swoop like that through the airlock, I was like, oh, come on. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, Doom. yeah, yeah, yeah. Video game. That's like God mode. All of a sudden you just destroy everything all at once that was like way too easy i did re i do really want to see our heroes get beat up a little bit you know? that damage thing is yeah like you're saying that really bothers me that i mean look at let's let's even get into another point on this what is so is moth gideon really this week i mean yeah right so <laughs> the fight like that you know a couple strokes he's supposedly force sensitive because i'm thinking he's going to force pull the lightsaber back in his hand i'm like okay right. He knocks him down. He's going to force pull the lightsaber back in his hand. We're going to get some more combat. For him to kind of just go down with no combat. combat, yeah, it, it was that to me was very anticlimactic. I thought that fight would have been a lot more. I guess the, the play on it was he was pretending to lose to him to cause a bigger conflict between him and okay. uh, Bo-Katan. But still, I, I was expecting a bigger fight scene than, than they had. So that was, I guess, my only letdown of an excellent episode. I just, I mean, I can see the sinister edge to that, but I, I just expect a bigger fight. Yeah, bigger yeah, fight. I, I, I totally agree with the, you know, what Kendo says about the Dark Troopers. It was a bit of a letdown for them to be teased like that, you know, since like, um, I forget, was it the fourth or fifth episode that we seen them? Yeah. Um, to be teased like that and not them not to really, really, really be used more, you know, um, I don't know if it's a Disney thing to not have like the bad guys be that p- much powerful um, but as far as like the dark troopers, you present them as like, you know, this, this, this crazy type Terminator type force and stuff, and you want them to do a lot more damage. Now we got like the fight between Mando and like, you know, the one dark trooper and he kept bashing them, bashing them in that, in the head. That was good. That was good. But eh, I, I guess you wanted to see all those dark troopers actually do something more. Mm-hmm. And maybe we'll see that, you know, in like, um, you know, future stuff. But um, I, I have to agree that they could have done, done a little bit more, but that's just nitpicking for me. <laughs> right. For me, you know one, I... thing, one thing that this show has done that I think maybe maybe the prequels the prequels failed in this in this one thing. Well, they failed in a lot of things that we'll talk about as we go forward. But they failed in this one thing, and that's that they did not make the Jedi seem particularly dangerous. They did not make it seem like the Jedi were like, oh my goodness, a world battle changer, right? Like, we see Mando, who we know is an all-universe fighter, go all the stops, everything to kill one of these things, and Luke Skywalker walked through them like they weren't there. That is what a Jedi is. And they did the same thing uh, with Ashoka, where they showed her being just extremely formidable. That's I'm thinking about that shot where she looked like a... Like a... Like a... Like a jungle cat, just jumping... You know what I mean? Right. Just coming right at you. Like, she looked like yeah. a cheetah running at you and just coming ninja. at you. Yeah, ninja. yeah, like a ninja. So, so... That's one thing I really appreciate is that we saw one what one of these things can do. And yeah, you're right. It looks, that was like a speed running trick when Mando just did this. I'll click this thing and they all go out the door before they even wake up, right? It felt like something from Hitman 47. And <laughs> luckily, luckily these guys had rockets. I mean, thank goodness. We knew they had rockets yeah, they could get thank, into orbit. Thank the maker. <laughs> <laughs> Kim wanted them to do some damage. Uh, I, I hear you, Kim. You know what I'm getting into that, though? I, I think that we're not seeing the damage and the, the maybe the grotesqueness if we thought. I, I didn't really look at the privacy controls, but I think it's to do with Disney+. Plus. I was looking at their catalog. I don't think they have anything rated R. And I don't think they want no, to push that no, line. You know what I mean? Is Star Wars a rated R? Is Star Wars rated R? 
Well, not really rated R, but I mean, now they're starting to have crazy ratings for just violence. You know what I mean? Not oh, really just you. for, for you know. So I don't know if it's a violence thing that they don't want to have on the platform or not. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of is why there's not too much, you know, blood and damage. I, I don't see anything like it, that on there. We'll see when Disney. Disney by itself is not a rated R company, so they don't really make any movies rated R. Period. Even with their extended stuff. I don't think they have any rated R movies. Deadpool, Deadpool you know, was the first one, yeah. Sci- well, is uh, technically, you know, it hasn't been made yet, so who knows how that's going to go. But, you know, if they do go that route, that, 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 that's probably going to be their first rated R stuff. But on this platform, it's called Disney, so you're not going right. to see a lot of blood and guts. That, well, you're not going right. to see any blood at all, but you're not going to see any type of crazy type of violence where I think that's maybe the, the thing that, that – you know, that you had, like, missing it in, in this type of thing, where the, the stormtroopers go down, like, you know, just like that. It's unfortunate, but, you know, um, I guess if we're, you know, to keep entertained, it is what it is, you know, for the um, the company that, you know, corporation that owns this. I appreciated yeah. the, uh, the care toward the Imperial War Dead we got at the beginning of the episode, and it was so, it was so ironic for them to lampshade the destruction of the death star mentioned the, the casualties incurred during the destruction of the death stars when their uh destroyer <laughs> the actor made the appearance here the 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 man who who hit the uh, thermal exhaust port with the proton torpedo himself luke skywalker makes an appearance in this episode and we hear the peon for the uh the the requiem for the imperial war dead which is a lot like it's like the uh, the Imperial March, but you know how Fox Football has that sad injury music they'll use, you know, but da but it's just like that. It's, it's Imperial <laughs> March, but the Leroy the robots got hurt music. That's how, it, that's how it works. Hey, well, um, Mando gets the band back together, so we get you know Bo-Katan appearances again, and um, um, my girl uh, from from the Sasha, you know, from the WWE. I forget her um her oh, name. Yeah, and I had her name. name. So I we get it. As well. And, we we and, get a good fight between them two. <laughs> and wasn't that and... Great how Ma, Ma, uh, Gideon did sort of a, a, a Palpatine moment between it was it reminded me of uh, what he was trying to do between Vader and his son, between Din Djarin and Bo Katan. He tried to get them because he knew he was out, like he was done. Yeah. Yeah. But he saw this opportunity to use whatever mind mind control however whatever he thought he was going to do to really kind of get these two i mean i thought there was going to be another fight i yeah. thought there was yeah. Another fight yeah yeah the dark saber and he was like no no you have it has to be through combat and then john's like take it take it you know she didn't take it what's she gonna yeah. do it's you just know, weird though because she she took it and that's that's another part if you try to tie this together because she just took it in Rebels and that's like a lot of, that's one of the calling points everybody's talking about Sabine oh, handed it to her and she took it in Rebels. I, I guess oh, I should. Uh, yeah, yeah, we gotta do I'm everything getting, the hard way in these heroic operas. You know what I mean? You can never just right. go, okay, great. You know that's great. I I, I want to call out. Can I call out before we move on from that fight scene uh, with the Moff with John Carlo Esposito and Moff Gideon? I want to call out when he goes, I just wanted his blood. Like, he's, like he said that like it was just like not a big deal. He's like, all I wanted was his blood, and I have that, so you can take the rest of him. I don't need the rest I just thought that line was delivered so well. Because he said it when like so. Living, I thought it was like a Breaking Bad line, the way he yeah. said it. That kind of brought back on Gus. Yeah. I, yeah, I was like, infinite, oh, Gus. Yeah. I will kill your yeah. infant Yoda. Yeah. He's, he's, he, this character he's played here has probably been his best villain since Breaking Bad. <laughs> Is, and is, the is, tie-in, is, obviously, is, with that is obviously the blood was used, as we know, moving forward. And we'll get into this on the, the you know, maybe a, call, a question or two down the line. But mm-hmm. now the blood is obviously used for Snoke and to bring Palpatine back. So we know what now that ties in. So, the, like I said, the continuation of this and the, the trying to rectify and to explain things that we didn't get. I mean, I, I really appreciate what what they're doing because like, yeah. they don't have to do that. Yeah. They didn't have to. They don't yeah. owe that to us or to anybody. Yeah. But I yeah. see how. The, you know the the attention that Filoni and, and Favreau and everybody does try to do to try to put more continual you know continuity to the se- to the series and the Star Wars as a whole. So I, I do appreciate those little little snippets they add in there, so you can try to start to line up you know your, your columns and, and to make them all in a straight in a straight line. Yeah, they're definitely I mean, trying uh, to everything. They're trying to you know fill in the right. gap, pull it all right. the gaps uh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bringing 
bringing Luke in, ha- having the droid R two back in back. Oh, yeah. In, I yeah, mean, yeah. really, when he when he came in, that that okay. So Hitch was Hitch started screaming when I, he saw the X wing. Right, I get that. <laughs> R two, the little X wing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. R two rolled into that into the room into the thing. That, that was a moment. That I mean, for me to see R two and Luke standing next to each other again, I mean that that put really put it together for me. That that was great. And it's one. Okay, you're uh, yeah. For Grogu to go, go ahead, with, it's one thing for Grogu to go with Luke, but we, Grogu's going with R two, so we know he'll be okay. Because R two, R two, R two will take care of him, right? And he'll love him, and you know, R two is the one that has all the love in the Star Wars universe. Comes right through R two D two. You correct. know, I was thinking of you know, I'm thinking of Ken as well as you were saying about R two. I know we couldn't get a whole series on him because he really doesn't have a voice. But how would it be? Because R two has been has been the character who's been through everything. If we get this Luke series, or whatever. What if we get some kind of development on R2? Because I'd be interested to see what Luke got from his father through R2 and what Grogu, because obviously R2 was there when Grogu was in the temple and the temple was, you know, the Jedi temple on Coruscant was raided. Yeah. I would like to see if we get some kind of character development for R2. He's been along so long that I think we des- he deserves that as a character, that we get to see maybe kind of like a, a book of R2. Even if, I, even if we had a graphic novel... I think that would be pretty cool, but I think the book of R2 is due. So that's what I, you know, Hitch is calling out. I'd like to see, I'd like to see R2's kind of his memory history, because I think that'd be a great thing to see as far as what he passed to Luke from his father and, and everything he's seen. I mean, he's the, basically the oldest character since C-3PO's memory has been wiped and he's had a semi backup. So I'd like to see R2. He's been there, seen everything. Uh, They tried that a little bit with uh, droids. Uh, it was a Dark Horse series. He's, he's still he's with three PO through all of it, but the, the some of the stories that they want, you know, kind of wove together were um, were pretty good, entertaining. You know, some of the uh, the things they see, but nothing real. It'd be great if he, like, what does R two do on a on an off night? You know, like uh, he's not with Luke and he's just <laughs> gets into trouble. What does he do? Or you know, is he a he she and it? But how are we how are we going to relate to him? That would be yeah, that would be interesting. Disney could do it too because right. Wally, that's Disney, right? I think. Yeah, Wall-E. yeah, yeah. They bought Pixar, yeah. whatever that was, the studio. Hmm. So I mean, they definitely know how to turn, uh, you know, non-organic things into characters. You know, so they definitely yeah. could. They definitely could do it. I mean, I guess we'll get into the the other talking points. So this will be the complete 180 of our uh, Carbonate Bounty BS. And, we're, uh, you know, I was talking to you guys off the air of it. So we'll just dive right in. And all our listeners and, and everybody viewing us on all our platforms as well, um, don't know if you guys are aware, but, I mean, there's two sides of this episode. You loved it or you hated it. And we'll get to the reason why people didn't like it. And I've talked to you guys off air about some of my feelings about it. I mean – Look, I loved everything about Luke. I love the introduction of him. But like I told you guys, when minute thirty hit, I, I don't I didn't care about the Mandalorian. I just didn't. I wanted to see Luke. <laughs> and the fact that Luke took Rogu with him, it leaves the series one of two different ways. It's gonna be I now want to see a Luke series. I want to see Luke and Grogu. And I mean, the thing is, it was risky and I know they did it, but it kind of took away the vibes because we're trying to get away from the Jedi. This was supposed to be a story about a Mandalorian. And I mean, unfortunately, and it's not really an unfortunate because I loved it, but you know, the introduction to Luke just took it all away. I mean, I, I love the episode, but like I said, I, I was just ecstatic when I saw Luke and after 30 minutes, I really didn't care about any other character. I just wanted to see Luke and it, it was one of those awe inspiring moments. So I guess I get the twofold. What did you guys think about, you know, the kind of the, the other side of the coin. I mean, do you see it as far as, you know, I, I, it was I come, I, I come from a different perspective because I'm coming, gradu- you know, as a casual and I'm totally invested in um, the Mandalorian, you know, as you know, for Din Djarin's, you know, journey from from where we, you know, um, started him at start where he started out at to like right now and everything. So seeing Luke was a bonus, but I'm still invested in Din Djarin, you know, so that didn't take away the whole excitement. It was the dopest moment of the episode and everything, but it didn't take away my investment into Grogu, you know, Grogu and, you know, Din Djarin, um, especially at the end when, when, when he lets go of him, he said, you have to go with him 
Um, and Luke says that, uh, well, he, he needs you to let him go, you know, um, and, and they, they, they had the moment, you know, him taking off the helmet, like I said before, um, it didn't take away, at least for me, you know, the, the investment I had throughout this series of, of, of everything with Mando. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree completely. I didn't, uh, I didn't lose, I didn't lose my interest in any part of the story, but they, they've now introduced three new three new storylines which could be <laughs> i mean there's there's the book of boba fett which was so a lot of people don't stay to the end of the credits but i always do so i would have missed that i mean some people would have missed that but there's that then there's this the the now this conflict between dinjarin and, and bogatan right so that's got to yes. go somewhere. so that's your continuation of the mandalorian and now we have Grogu's learning. So there's Training. three really heavy now storylines. I don't know that they have to intertwine these. These could oh, all be. Oh no, these should be separate for sure. Yeah, they could be. There, there, there's three different shows now going on, and and there's also well, what's up with Moff? Because now he's he's kind of he's kind of done. So he has to go find a new star cruiser to, to jump onto and you know start being you know whatever he wants to be darth vader wannabe uh, so there's maybe there's a fourth story there well I mean, i'm sure like Bo, Bo katan is going to take i'm assuming i was assuming Bo katan and you know they were going to take him you know um wherever and everything so that's that story so yeah i mean you got like multiple stories and they don't necessarily have to be shows. I mean, uh, with with Disney Plus and their their whole thing, everything is all in house. Um, they could just be like little mini series or whatever. So they don't have to be. It doesn't have to be a season one, season two, season three of a particular you know show. Um, from the way Mandalorian ended, this was like the end of a story. The way to right. me, the way it ended off. And the way that they did the end credits with the you know book of Boba Fett, which we just found out in the um, episode, it was uh, it wasn't stated in the you know Disney investor thing. Um, it seemed to me that this was the continue this uh, the the book of Boba Fett is going to be the continuation of the Mandalorian, not necessarily yes. a season three. It seemed like it was going to be its own thing, but continuing that this it's the next chapter in the story is, is what I'm I'm looking at. Right. What do you think, Hitch? I mean, are you are you uh, are you understanding the other side that people are looking at as far as the I mean, like we all talked about it was risky. But yeah. what were your thoughts on it? Well, I mean, I've stopped jumping up and down, so I've settled enough to, to at least, you know, I don't I don't immediately hate everybody that didn't react the way I did. Right. So I'm not I'm I'm, I'm, I'm past the hate. Uh, hate Scott with the old hashtag. You know, when it comes to this story, bringing Luke Skywalker into this story effectively makes this the story of Luke's apprentice finding Luke. That, that's kind of what this, that makes it this part of the story. But the story is called The Mandalorian. And what else is this a story of? Well, we know from, you know, watching the cartoons and knowing what they've told us on the show and talking to Bo-Katan that we know that the, the Darksaber is the, like, the, the symbol of it's like the scepter of might on Mandalore, right? It's like the symbol of yeah. rule. And he is now the rightful owner of it, kind of like the master wand in Harry Potter or whatever. So symbolically, he, Din, is now the Mandalorian because he has this Darksaber, right? So in, in, in the Legends context, and I know my friends at the, uh, the CMA will love me bringing this up, but there's this idea of the true Mandalore, who is the real leader of the Mandalorian people. And to me, it feels like we're getting this origin story of somebody who, you know, you watch the first episode of this series, Din is like mercenary. He mercs a lot of people that maybe he doesn't even need to in that opening scene, right? He's, he's right. kind of callous. You know, he does what he has to do. He doesn't have that that emotional anchor to other people that makes him care about them uh, the way a leader needs. And so if this isn't just the story of Luke Skywalker's new apprentice, if this isn't just the story of, of Grogu, the future Jedi master, then it's the story of Din learning how to have compassion and how to be a warrior with empathy 
and learning what it means to have something mean more to you than some silly rule about wearing a hat. And mm-hmm. that that is what has ha- we've seen uh, happen with Din and letting go of Grogu, right? Letting go of him voluntarily because it's the best thing for him. Not because right. it was the best thing for Mando, not because it made him happy, because he knew that for Grogu to be safe, he has to learn how to fight like Luke because nobody's taking Luke's blood. Mm-hmm. Nobody's coming in and taking his blood. Did you see that moment when he took the helmet off? It was similar to the Anakin uh, Luke scene, mm-hmm. or the Vader Luke scene, we'll say, at the end of... Um, so, that, you know, like I said, they do a lot of good job with the call, the tie-ins and the call-outs. I really, oh, you know, felt those kind of vibes. Yeah, so, yeah the callbacks were... It, it was it was a great moment, like you're saying. I mean, I, I really appreciated it. Um, let's, but, yeah, you know... Let's approach it for a second. Like, that is one story, right? Like, 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 like we're right. And ch- season three will essentially be the story of Boba Fett. You know, th- this story accomplished a lot as far as resetting the terms of the Star Wars universe. And in my opinion, w- what made it different from Episode 7, 8, and 9 is Episode 7, 8, and 9 felt like stories, stories like the story movie, it, but, it, but it didn't feel like what happened next. And right. this this feels like, organically, if you told me at the end of, you know, Episode 6 before they made anything beyond the prequels, and you explaining to me this is what happened next, I would believe every second of it, right? It mm-hmm. makes sense organically. The whole thing makes sense from beginning to end, and it doesn't feel like a story, like this could have happened. Like maybe this is what happened to the Jedi. Maybe Luke Skywalker disappeared. Maybe, you know, maybe uh, Ben Solo had a freak out and had to kill the part of himself that was still Ben Solo. So he's told you this whole story in allegory about him, you know, turning, murdering his father and obliterating the part of him that was himself and turning into the First Order and then having that part cut out of him because of his connection to Ray. Like, we can tell you that whole story now. And and I just think that it's remarkable that it was a TV series that did this. Like, I can't, right. I can't, it boggles my mind that television, yeah. of all places, is yeah. where this is happening. And because it is a TV show and because of the fact that it's uh, the end of 2020, you know, it seems like this is almost a sea change where the exciting future of Star Wars seems to have a lot more to do with television than it does with movies. I've always said that um, this, this, the form that it's in, while movies is a great thing because you get like the spectacle of movies, you get more of a budget in the movies and, you know, you could tell a grander story. The way Star Wars is built, what, what I've always felt is more fit for an episodic thing. Well, you know, the, the movies have episodes, but right. the, 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 the storylines and everything in the, um, you know, in the universe you got a lot more stories that you could tell on a weekly basis versus what you could see in like, you know, the grand scale of, you know, movies. The movies are fine, but you're only going to have them for every two to three years or what have you. But the stories that you could tell on a different platform, which is what we're seeing with this, you know, their, you know, Disney streaming thing opens up a whole lot of doors where a lot more stories can be told within or, you know, on that particular platform. And you got the, uh, the 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 confidence of Disney putting the money into it to where this episode here, it actually seemed like something that could be on the big screen. You know, this particular episode, <clears throat> this season finale, should have been up on a you know big screen. And I would have I would have bet you know had if we were all able to be in theaters together congregating and everything, you would have had a lot of cheers. You know, the same way <clears throat> people. You know, cheer for that last scene and then on row one when, um, you know, Darth Vader did his thing and everything. So you got a lot of really good stuff happening on this um, platform that Disney, I don't know if they really know, you know, knew what they had, but they're finally coming around to the fact, that, okay, this is what Star Wars is. You know, this is the stories that we could tell, but it's always been there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it uh, comes from uh, like like you said, it, it it could totally like Star Wars. If it had never been in the theater, I think it could have been on TV. It's just like the cliffhangers, uh, the Western cliffhangers that used to be on in the the the, the 50s and the 60s, were, or even just any of the TV shows back then that were classics. Uh, Bonanza, you know, was weekly episodes, and people were glued, and they just wanted to watch the next thing, and they. You know, it was close enough together that they kept the excitement going. You know, it was, you know, week to week. Um, 
Star Wars, it's so fantastic it could last two years between episodes. But if you could think of each movie as being an episode just really big, uh, uh-huh. Disney, Disney just took the two to three hour movie format and cut it up really nicely into pieces and, and fed it to us nicely over, you know, over a few weeks. And the, it's really the best formula for it now, especially with everything, the way things are changing. Um, this is going to be how we're going to be getting our entertainment. So gosh, darn it, Disney, you're doing a damn good job. And they <laughs> way to bring them back home. <laughs> brought it all back and just keep, keep doing it, keep doing it the same way. And, We'll keep giving you our money. So, you know. <laughs> While we're on the topics of these, um, DP, do you have any uh, responses for our question the last week? Anybody give us any feedback or responses on anything so well, far? Well, I got the email of the week this week, and it's from uh, Freestyle. Do? It is from Freestyle JJ, and, it, and it, he writes in part, this was a very satisfying conclusion. The de-aging of Mark Hamill was almost unnoticeable. I thought it was a new actor at first. All hail Mandalore, and OP Luke Skywalker is back. The whole crew in Beskar armor is about to be murdered, and Skywalker just walks through the dark troopers with ease. Freestyle JJ, thank you so much for your email of the week. I I agree. You know, it was it was really great to see Luke flexing the Jedi muscle. That is that is something you really wanted to see in that. I, mean, I think they delivered in spades, and it's so great. So thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for your email of the week. And if you head over to our Facebook group, the Carbonite Bounty BS on Facebook, perhaps you're seeing this because you're a uh, Nerd Cyclopedia follower, check out our discussion there. We have a going, an ongoing consideration of who should they cast as uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn. In, uh, right now under consideration, we have Benedict Cumberbatch, Lee Pace, we have Jason Isaacs, and we want to hear from you. So head on over to our Facebook group, sign on in, and we want to hear from you next week. So hit us up and answer our question of the week. Now, we're going to be back. We're going to be talking about the Phantom Menace when mm. we come back. I know we haven't announced that yet, but this week's question of the week for our viewers is, what is your most favorite part of the Phantom Menace and what is your least favorite part of the Phantom Menace. We want to hear from you, and you can write us at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com or drop by our Carbonite Bounty BS Facebook discussion group. Yep, and I want to give a few shout outs to like some of the um new members. Thanks, you guys, because we just um made the the um the group page about a week and we got some really you know good response and everything. So I want to give a shout out to Thomas. He's been posting a you know good bit on here. So definitely appreciate that, Thomas. Um I want to also give a, another shout out to Colleen. She's been um posting some really good stuff. So, you know, um really good responses from you know people just 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 you know want to talk about star wars they you want to be a part of something so i mean why not come over and actually talk about the thing that you want to talk about there's so many star wars groups out there but i think ours is going to you know be that one that people are going to cater to a lot because we're going to talk to you we're going to you know talk to the fan and everything we're going to you know interact and stuff so as we grow this thing we want you to grow with us and know you know be a part of the conversation um, you keep it going. Thank you, Charles, for, you know, um, posting some some really good stuff. Chuck, you know, you're out there and everything. Just want to give some shout outs. David, you know, he he's posting some stuff, stuff on like Brown Eyes Skywalker. I mean, we got some really <laughs> good meme stuff going on, you know, in, 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 in this whole group. So keep it coming. And as we, you know, get into like 2021, you know, that's going to be, I feel like a breakout year for this whole group and this whole podcast and you know, just exploding this thing and just keeping it, just keeping it together. Star Wars like. Definitely. We appreciate everything, but uh, you know, so and it was his post a question, you know, some of the final closeout things for us here, you know, um, I'll begin with my kind of feel for the 2021 Mandalorian. I mean, you know, I know they made the announcement, but the Mandalorian season three is coming out in December. Um, obviously they announced the book of Boba in December, I highly doubt this. We're thinking they'll be in tandem. So I, mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with season three being, you know, just like a book. It's a different chapter of us focusing on Boba because obviously if Boba is with, um, and I forget her name, but uh, if Boba's with uh, with the um, 
the, the long shooter, I'll call her, there's a time lapse between them two getting back to Tatooine and what happened on this ship. So I'm imagining if there is a season four continuation with Din Djarin, there will be a time lapse, whether it be, you know, a, and I would like to see that a time lapse to where there maybe is going to be another assault on Mandalore or the reclaiming of Mandalore for season four, which maybe would be a good series ending season. If they want to go four seasons with this, but yeah, I, I don't have a problem, you know, with Bo- Boba Fett getting, you know, you know, his whole whatever episodes will be eight to ten or six or whatever the case may be. I kind of like the change up. So uh, what were you guys thoughts or do you think they're going to try to simultaneously do two series? I mean, it wouldn't be beyond them, but I, I just don't I, see them I, doing I, two in I, December. I, you know, if 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 what I'm um, I'm thinking that they're going to do, I think we should stop looking at these things as seasons. You know, it, we're so used to how things are going. You know, it, with season one, season two, and like I said before, um, season three, and just thinking these things as seasons. I mean, these are really chapters in the story and everything. We got a right. couple, you know, chapters of the Mandalorian. We're about to get another a chapter of um, um, you know, Boba Fett. How do we feel about Boba Fett getting his um own thing? How do we feel about that? I'm good you with know. it. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, we don't want any I trouble with were... Mr. Fett. Yeah, he's allowed to have it. Yeah, we don't have any problem with him having a TV show. But Boba, Boba Fett's allowed to do whatever he wants. So he can have a TV show. He can have five TV shows. So he can have as many TV shows as he wants to have. Let's, let's, let's not get too hasty so, here. So what if, what if his show, what if his show starts in December 2021 and we get flashbacks of that moment when he sees Mace behead Django? Okay, no. starting from right there, like, what moment we, did that change him? Was he gonna like? Let's say that never happened. Let's say that that didn't happen, and he just he palled around with his dad. Which what a great relationship. I mean, I wish, I hope my son and I have the, have that kind of relationship. You know, my my dad and I, you know, very separate. You know, I, I don't know, and I like to see fathers and sons close. Although most of the father-son relationships in this story fail, obviously. <laughs> so I'd like to see one that worked. But so that moment, Mace killed Django. That that created Boba Fett, basically, right? I mean, that's going to create the entire solidarity, the in, this being alone. He has nothing. So that moment on, that could be a great like flashback where he's, He's now and then going back to his childhood to see how he developed and became Boba Fett, you know, just became that character that sort of just alone, mercenary, a hell of a fighter. You know, who trained who who taught him? I mean, his dad showed him a few things, but now who 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 built him, who created who created Fett? So, I mean, yeah. And, and I like what you said uh uh, Sam, just about we gotta we gotta get rid of the series concept. The the that that that's over. We're just looking at chapters. We're just looking at storylines instead of series one, series two. And I think they started that with Mandalorian. They did just talking about chapters. Like this was chapter this was chapter sixteen. So it wasn't the end. It was just chapter sixteen. So now we're looking at. 17, 18, 19. I mean, it could keep going. Yeah, you like know. like you did in the, in the movies. You have episode one, two, three. Right. You know, just just keep it going and everything. So yeah, there I like. I th- I think as far as like moving forward, I, this is all the way they've told the stories. It's like a story hydra. You know, every time they close off one story, five more stories pop up that I want to see them tell. <laughs> I want to see them tell the retaking of Mandalore. I want to see that what happens to Din. I want to see what happens with Luke and Grogu. And, you know, I am super excited to see what happens in the book of Boba Fett because a lot of the best uh, EU stuff was, you know, centered around the Mos Eisley Cantina and Jabba's Palace and, you know, this sort of underworld, underbelly sort of situation that was going on where Tatooine was sort of under these, like, warlords. And Boba Fett entering in that mix is going to be super-duper awesome. And I- I'm excited to see that story for sure. I definitely don't want this to be where, you know, where we leave the quote-unquote Mandalorians. I want to see a lot more of them. And, yes. you know, yeah. they they have a situation now where it's like, like you guys are saying, I, I was telling you, oh, they could release, who knows what series they'll release next, but really it's like how many episodes <clears throat> of this are we going to get a year? 
And then how do you want to whack that up? You know, I don't care if you have 50 episodes and you want to have 10 different stories that are five or five different stories that are 10 or one story. Right. 50. I don't right. really care, right. you know, how you want to, how you want to break that up. If you're telling me 2021, like this part of the story doesn't have Din in it. I'm okay with that because I know he's still there. You're going to bring yes. it back because if you yes. brought back 30 year old Mark, Mark Hamill, <laughs> you can bring back the man, the right. Mandalorian, right? You can bring Din back. So, I'm excited for them to go in whatever direction they want to go. And to be honest with you, you know, I have no qualms whatsoever with whatever they want to do. I will watch whatever it is. I am in full shutting up and giving them my money mode. I hope they take <laughs> as much of it as they want. Uh, you know, I don't even want to, I don't even want to think about, you know, merchandising costs to me to the next 10 years for star Wars things. So, so, you know, I, when I, when I think about, you know, 2021 in the book of Boba Fett and maybe another Mandalorian season three. And I think about the Obi-Wan series and you know what? This is also Disney plus. I think about the Loki, the, the, uh, the Loki limited series is coming out in May and, 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 and Hey, I got my hand out. I'm holding my money. Just take it, take it from me now. Take, You've got take, it. Take, take my money. I've been checkmated I'll, I'll by a mouse. Bank. I've been checkmated by a cartoon <laughs> mouse. Awesome. Oh, I'm I'm excited about the book of Boba. Like we're saying, we had our um, you know our ladies of Star Wars moment there. You know, we're missing one, and you know, a master for Filoni to if he can bring her. And I know uh, Hitch is a big proponent of this as well, but you know, it, can we get more of Jade now? I mean, it's we just like we've been calling a lot of stories. This is the one character that I think he can pull off that she doesn't. We can go to Mara Jade that's not a Jedi. It, you know, has a double-bladed spear. Although, I mean, Mara Jade essentially became what they used as Rey, I, I would still like to see the Mara Jade brought back from what is now listed as EU, but bring her back as a Legends character. I think she'd really be cool. And she'd tie into that book of Boba's. Maybe um, Luke travels back to Tatooine to meet her, or if there is ever a Luke love story or anything like that, I think this would be the best part to kind of introduce her to the Star Wars lore would be, you know, during these chapters. Mara is such an interesting character because she starts, you know, she starts off as like the Emperor's secret apprentice and she's trained in like the shadow arts. And so she's almost like a Sith. And so when Luke is, when Luke is, and since none of this matters, since it's all, all in retcon. So, so when Luke right. is looking for Jedi, he runs into these, these sort of secret, like halfway projects where the emperor was like, oh, I'll start you as an apprentice and then lose interest and go do something else. And then like, you know what I mean? They'd have people with like lightsabers that didn't know what they were doing. Uh, you know, I, I think that you can do Mara because the Empire is now, it's weakened, but it exists. So they would have shadowy agents and they would have force sensitive agents running out of, you know, running the Emperor's shadow stuff. So I think you really can do it. Uh, I think somebody is going to love Luke Skywalker. I mean, he's, he's, he's an attractive man and he's also a uh, Grand Jedi Master. He's probably, you know, people <laughs> probably find him to be a magnetic human being and I'm sure he could, you know, he, he could find a wife. And it would be interesting to find out, like, the Luke Skywalker we see in Episode Eight. If you draw a line between this Luke Skywalker that we saw here and that Luke Skywalker twenty-five years in the future, I mean, that's a scary line to draw. You know, something something happens to this dude that's rough, and it happens before he pulls his he pulls his green lightsaber out for the last time on Ben. So, mm -hmm. so it, it's a situation where, yeah, I'd love to see Mara Jade, but because we already know what happens in seven, eight, and nine. It's like dry. It's, right. They're being driven into tragedy. All these people are being driven to their end because, you know, what five years after ROTJ. So so Ben's probably Leia's probably pregnant with Ben, right? Exactly as this is going on, right? Probably something like that. Right, because if we're thinking about it's twenty years, yeah, you're right. That's, yeah, that will like probably that. be. Should, yeah, it's probably making that time frame. So, you know, yeah, like you're saying, it's it's getting interesting. I mean, as far as what Disney's laying out, the timelines are adding up. Um, you know. Kudos to, the, as you guys are saying, what they're doing. I mean, they, you know, we've all been been taken by the mouse. You know, he, he came. I'm in excited. The... I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God they have so enough. much. We never have to worry about them running out of money and not making like not finishing it either. That's the thing about Disney that's like, that's so great. Like they'll, you know, if they start down the path of we're gonna make this, like you know, enormous magnum opus. You know, this isn't like. Like George R. R. Martin, where it's a one-man shop. Like they, there's nothing that's stopping that train. Like what, good, bad, otherwise, it's happening. That's gonna come out. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah. 
We don't have – there's no waiting on the wins of winner with these guys. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's a nice thing. Let's say a nice thing about Disney so they don't sue us for using <laughs> their font. Yeah, we, let's say a nice thing so we can get uh, so we can get some – so we can get invited. Screeners would be great, but I don't think – well, even the no, investors didn't oh, get screeners for this. We, we... We keep it going and we're growing and everything, Mitch. We are definitely going to get invited. <laughs> that's right. One day. One I know. Day, that's the goal. I'll be at the I'll be at the Galactic Star Cruiser, so maybe that'll be a bonus, uh, something bonus for you guys. Uh, there we go. We're working on now. I'm trying to get there for the press media day. So when they open the Star Wars Galactic Battle Cruiser before it's open to the public, uh, I might have some behind the scenes stuff for all our uh, yes. nerds on it. So yeah. So that's so keep. You know, everybody keep it along, like I said, with the Facebook and all our socials, um, because we, uh, as far as content, we're, like they're saying, we're going to keep coming. We're not going away because of Calvinite Bounty BS and our Mandalorian watch alongs and our discussions have went away. We have a lot, a lot of content, um, as DP said and, and Hitch has said, uh, coming along for the future for everybody. So, you know, definitely engage. We're growing with you. And, uh, you know, as Kendo and all four of us, is our ideas when we try to try to expand this is it's not just about our four opinions. We're posing, you know, questions to everybody who's listening, whether it be on a car on any of our, you know, streaming platforms, whether it be a podcast or, you know, any kind of different audio mediums, we want you guys and your discussions and your drive homes to be interactive with this. And we really want this to be a voice about not only ours, but the people of star Wars. There's so many segregations. I feel like with star Wars between us, we discussed about, the hardcores and the people that don't really have an opinion and the people that are just coming on. But with us, you know, no opinion is devalued. So we want everybody's opinion. Please interact with us. You know, it doesn't go under the radar. We want to grow with you guys. We want to be the voice of everybody, you know. So that's something that we are looking forward to this year. And uh, I said we all appreciate everybody, you know, leaving 2020, going into 2021. And, you know, like I said, all of us as Star Wars fans want to grow together. So Really appreciate yep. everybody's interaction. All right. But, uh, you know, before we get out of here, you know, once again, we want to just thank everybody listening to um, our podcasts on any kind of streaming platform, whether it be Apple, Spotify, uh, you name it, you know, iHeartRadio. Please, uh, you know, give us that five-star rating. We really appreciate it. We really do do a lot for not only, you know, us personally, but us as a community to grow. The more we grow, the more content we can do, the more things we have planned for everybody, um, whether it be, you know, planned giveaways out in the future, all of this stuff are things that we want to do together and grow the community together. So please interact with us. Please keep liking, sharing, subscribing, anything positive you can do to grow us so we can grow you. We would really appreciate it. Um, do you guys have any other closing comments before we get out of here and give you guys a Christmas break off from us? But uh, as Hitch alluded to, a very exciting, um, you know, episode one watch that we'll start with you guys. So uh, definitely have some more content coming in the next couple of weeks. Can't wait. Absolutely. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Well, well, without, without further ado, uh, we really appreciate you guys again. I uh, hope everybody have a happy holidays. However, you celebrate your holidays, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys here in another week. So, uh, without further ado, guys, this is the way. The way. This is the way. This is the way. <laughs> I went off again. That's a twofer. <laughs> <sighs>